twice by Germany and twice by Australia. And uh, I'm sad to say that it's actually recently been broken and is now back in Germany. Uh, so have you ever wondered how it feels to break a world record? Let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you drink too much Red Bull. <clears throat> so how did I get that record? You remember, it started with the vision of the cheetah on the cover of Popular Science magazine. My vision had come true. And in fact, my vision realized itself to an extent that was almost a little bit spooky. Through no action on my part or anybody else that I know of, I actually ended up on the cover of Popular Science magazine. And it was small, uh, but I was on the cover. And not only that, but they featured critical power in myself in a two-page spread inside the magazine. A clear vision is incredibly powerful. You know, I think that we make these subconscious decisions on our journeys that support these powerful visions. And that, of course, along with a lot of hard work, end up creating our reality. But I actually do believe that there's some magical quality behind these visions. And I have no idea how it happens. I can't explain it. But sometimes it's just bizarre how close my success resembles my original vision. Earl Nightingale said, we are and become what we think about. I think that's what a vision is, what we think about. You know, when I embarked upon this challenge, I started with this vision, um, but I had no idea how I was going to accomplish the mission. I didn't possess anything even remotely close to the physical abilities required. I didn't know anything about building a high-tech, streamlined carbon fiber bicycle, and I didn't know anything about aerodynamics either. But remember Goethe's advice. What you can dream you can do, begin it. And I believe that therein lies the real secret behind success. So rather than getting bogged down by all the obstacles standing in my way and all of the unknowns, I instead focus on beginning it, on just taking my first step, and then after that, taking my next step, and so forth and so forth. And I've got a really great story uh, about the importance of not getting bogged down by all of those uh, scary unknowns and instead focusing on your next step. Now this was a way back, a long time ago, at about the time I started my software company. A friend of mine came to me one day, uh, he owned a printing company, and he came to me one day with this idea that he had. And his idea was to make recall cards for Canadian dentists so they wouldn't have to import them from the United States. Now this was a long time ago. Uh, this was actually before the Canada-US Free Trade Agreement. So it was quite cost prohibitive for Canadian, Canadian businesses to import products from the United States. Um, and the idea, his idea was that he would do the printing and that I would do the design work. <laughs> At first I thought, right, can you actually imagine having to design a card that would actually make people want to go to the dentist? Yeah, no. But I felt that I was up for the challenge and seemed like a good business idea, so I said, sure, let's go for it. We spent the next two weeks and we produced our very first set of cards. And uh, then we watched the cards sit on a shelf at the back of the warehouse, collecting dust underneath a bunch of boxes for the next year, as each of us very, very quickly forgot all about this great idea that we had. And we got busy with our other businesses and we got busy with our lives. And you kind of know how that goes, right? I think we've all sort of been in that boat before. You know, it was almost as if we expected the cards to just fly off the shelf and sell themselves and make us millionaires overnight. But it doesn't work that way, does it? But you know, my subconscious mind didn't let me forget about this commitment that I made uh, and was busy constantly nagging me about how I had taken the easy route and had just given up. So finally, and I, and I really do to this day believe it was mostly just to appease that subconscious nagging, I decided that I was going to take a weekend and I was going to go into my office and do whatever I needed to do to put together a brochure advertising our cards and then get it out to a bunch of dentists. And I felt that if there was a response to that, then that might give my partner and I the kick in the butt that we needed to get going on the project again. So I did. 
I went in uh, early on Saturday morning one day, and it, it's, you know, funny uh, how some things in life you can remember as if they happened yesterday. And this is one of those uh, events for me. And it happened a very, very long time ago. But I remember it so vividly. I went in on Saturday, and my mission was to get this brochure done. I worked the entire day uh, using the primitive technology available to me at the time. I, I actually used my black and white photocopier and I photocopied 500 black and white brochures and uh, hand folded every single one of them and stuffed them into 500 envelopes. And believe it or not, I actually licked 500 stamps. <laughs> and have you ever wondered how it feels to lick 500 stamps? Let me show you. <laughs> and I hand addressed all of these uh, envelopes with a list of uh, dentists that I copied out of a bunch of phone books. And on Monday morning, I dropped the whole lot off at the post office and I kind of washed my hands of it because in my mind, I was happy that I had at least completed the next step of what we had set out to do. And if nothing else, I felt like I avoided the temptation to quit. Well, one week later, I was stunned when I opened my mailbox and it was jam-packed full of orders. I'd completely forgotten about this too. 13 years later, after a lot of hard work, that uh, tiny little card company wasn't so tiny anymore. In fact, it was the largest supplier of recall cards to the Canadian dental marketplace in Canada. And more importantly, had grown to be the second largest in the United States. And in fact, we were acquired by our largest American competitor who felt threatened by our rapid growth into his market for an amount of money that allowed both my wife Helen and I to retire right on the spot. Thomas Edison said, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Never quit. Because you'll never know what could have been. You know, I'm so glad that I didn't quit. My life today would be completely different if not for that single Saturday where I went into my office to start the next step on my journey, where I made the decision to begin it. Can you think of a recent dream or a goal or a challenge that you quit? And is it possible that maybe you were focusing too much on the enormity and the unknowns of reaching your end result, which is, of course, your vision, Instead of simply your next step, what is your next step? And I challenge you, if you can identify what that next step is, I challenge you to begin it and to go lick some stamps. So after my world record success, I was ready for a new challenge. Now, using uh, technology to explore what we can accomplish using human power, I think sends two really, really important messages. And not only is using our human power good for the environment, but it's also good for us. With uh, obesity levels here in North America approaching 30%, and some studies actually say it's, more, it's cl a lot closer to 40% right now, I feel that anything that I can do to help uh, motivate and inspire and encourage others to become more physically active is something that I can do to contribute toward uh, solving this serious problem. So I decided to instead go for another two world records. The world record for the most distance on land by human power was in the bag. So I decided to add to that a world record for the most distance on water by human power in 24 hours. And then a world record for the most distance in the air in 24 hours by human power. So it was to conquer land, sea, and sky by human power. And it's a little project that I call the human power triple crown. Now I figured that the, uh, the air record was a little bit tough. <laughs> so instead I decided I better focus on the water one next. So I actually looked into it and I discovered that there actually was a human-powered boat distance record. And it was 168 kilometers. So 
I got together with my engineer friend and we came up with this very innovative pedal powered propeller drive which we put into a sea kayak and I actually planned an attempt at that 168 kilometer water record uh, right here in Calgary on Glenmore Reservoir and this was back in uh, 2007 and it ended up being a grueling 24 hours complete with all the usual fun of getting sick, crying, yelling at my crew, regretting, despairing, Basically, your standard run-of-the-mill world record attempt. Same pain and same result. I was successful when I crossed the finishing line 24 hours after starting the attempt, covering a total distance of 174 kilometers, beating the old record by about six kilometers. And then a couple days later, I get a phone call from California, and this fellow named Carter Johnson. Uh, so I'm going to describe Carter as a helpful person. And that is because Carter was trying to help me understand that the human power distance record for water in 24 hours was not 168 kilometers, nor was it 174 kilometers. And he knew that because last summer he had paddled his off-the-shelf kayak a total distance of 242 kilometers in 24 hours. Yeah. So, I looked into Carter's claim and I discovered, much to my horror, that he was right. The official records committee had Carter's record attempt documentation in the process of being ratified, which was why it wasn't yet posted as an official record. Basically, I hadn't done my homework. That's a whopping 40% farther than I went. Now talk about throwing a, a wet blanket on my victory parade. The 168 kilometer record that I thought was my goal? wasn't even remotely close to the real 24-hour record. Uh, we can have a little volume on this one for, for a second. Do you want to know how that felt? Let me, let me show you. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. That's how it felt. <laughs> I'll tell you. So uh, I was biting off more than I could chew by thinking that I could be the fastest man on land and the fastest man on water. But you know what? This was my vision. And I was not about to allow this discouraging news about Carter get in my way of accomplishing what I had really set out to do. But that meant I had to find a way to beat Carter's unfathomable 242 kilometer distance mark. And it was a seemingly impossible challenge that I had missed it by 68 kilometers. That would have taken me an additional 10 hours to make up. So back to the drawing board I went. I found the uh, smartest engineer in the human-powered boat design community. And I bet you didn't know that there was a human-powered boat design community, but there is. And together we came up with a brand new design. We call it Critical Power 2. And after building Critical Power 2 in my shop, unfortunately, testing revealed that it was a little bit slower than what our calculations were predicting. And in fact, all of our tests and our trials confirmed that I would end up being about 10% short of Carter's kayak record. And uh, we tried everything we could think of. This was the entire summer of 2008, trying to make critical power too faster. From shaving the weight of the boat down to a paltry 40 pounds, to testing all kinds of crazy aerodynamic enhancements. And I even lost five pounds to try to eke out just a little bit more speed out of the boat. And unfortunately, the res result in the end was that Critical Power 2 uh, was definitely the fastest pedal-powered boat on the planet, but the verdict was still the same. And that verdict was that I would need to increase my effort level, uh, my power output, by about 10% to beat Carter's kayak. And unfortunately, that seemed impossible so what did I do? Well, I took my next step. I went for it. Now this is going to be the toughest 24-hour event I had ever attempted. And I was going to have to go all out from the start to the finish. And in my mind, this was going to be an ultra marathon at sprint speed. So early on Monday morning, September 8th, 2008, I climbed aboard Critical Power 2 on Whitefish Lake in Montana, 
in front of a team of officials from the International Human Powered Vehicle Association, my own support crew, and of course my family, talk about biting off more than I could chew. I knew the only way I was going to get anywhere even close to Carter's kayak record was to number one, never stop pedaling. And this is actually how I received my support handoffs. That's my food and my water for the entire 24 hours so that I actually never did stop pedaling, not even once. And number two, never ease off on that intensity level. I crossed that start line at an intensity that for me was unthinkable. And basically I hung on for dear life. I remember uh, shortly after the start, Helen contacted me, my wife contacted me by radio. We had a radio on the boat. And she said, Greg, slow down. You're never going to be able to maintain that pace. You're going out way, way too fast. And I said, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> With a bit less than 20 minutes to spare, I actually passed Carter's kayak. And by the end of the 24 hours, I had my second world record of 245.1 kilometers, a mere three kilometers <laughs> over Carter's kayak. But I had done it. No person in history had traveled farther in a day on land or water um, than I had. And my record was uh, uh, ratified by the HPVA and Guinness, and I ended up in the uh, 2010 edition of the Guinness Book of World Records. You know, each year Guinness receives 65,000 new record attempts, and they choose less than 1,000 for publication in each book. So I consider myself very, very lucky to actually make it in, uh, in both of those books. You know, they say that um, success is 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. But I personally don't believe that's true. I think it's the other way around. I think that success is 10% perspiration, 90% inspiration. And that is because I think it takes a truly inspired idea to create your success. And you know the perspiration stuff? That will happen on its own if you have a solid enough vision of your success. And I think the human powered boat record is exactly the kind of perspiration that can result from a bold inspired vision. I wanted to be the fastest man on water and I really felt like my inspiration was propelling me up to this level required to achieve what I felt was impossible for me at the time. And I think that's what a powerful vision can do for you. What, what is your vision? What is it that, what is it that you want? You know, I, I, I've spent the last 40 minutes here today talking about what I want. Uh, but really the important question here today is what is it that what is it that you really want? What's your dream? What what's your grown-up Stingray three-speed? Uh, who's your who's your Carter Johnson? And uh, where are your stamps that need licking? You know, I've, I've been talking today about a method toward accomplishing a dream that works for me, and that is starting off with a bold goal, developing a clear vision of my success, and the importance of beginning it of just taking that first step. And I sincerely, sincerely, with all my heart, believe that those three simple steps can be applied by you to achieve your dream, any dream. You know, not just building a human-powered boat in your garage or setting world records, but of course, if that's what you want to do, I would say, yeah, go for it, of course, absolutely. But that's not my point here today. You know, I personally believe that you can accomplish anything you set your mind to. Personal goal, business aspirations, sports, even a world record if that's what you want. The most important thing is, is your goal bold enough? Is it big enough? You know, Donald Trump said, if you're going to think anyways, you might as well think big. I think the reason a bold goal has a greater chance of succeeding than just an average one is because we become excited about our challenge. And then we end up investing the appropriate amount of energy into achieving it. 
I think when your goal is bold, you're going to have the passion and you're going to have the motivation that you're going to require on your journey. And unfortunately, anything less, and we just end up not caring enough. And I think anything less, and our cards just end up gathering dust at the back of the warehouse, don't they? When was the last time you asked yourself, what was I thinking? When was the last time you were truly outside of your comfort zone? Stretch farther, reach higher, shoot for those stars. And don't dream big, dream bigger. And then have you developed that crystal clear vision of what you're trying to accomplish in your success? I think that what happens is we make these subconscious decisions on our journey that support these powerful visions. You know, it's almost as if it's an autopilot. Remember Martin Gale's advice, we are and become what we think about. And then finally, if you can do those two things, be bold about your goal, develop a clear vision of your success, all that's left is to begin it. Just start your journey by taking your first step. Go lick some stamps. You know, it might sound to you like it's all about the, uh, the destination for me. But you know, that isn't it at all. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, achieving my dreams and uh, breaking world records matter to me. But to me, these bold destinations create some pretty incredible journeys. And to me, that's what it's all about, is about that journey. And you know, when you set a goal and you bite off more than you can chew, it tends to get everyone else around you excited about it too. And they all want to be a part of it. And this is the part of the journey that I absolutely love is its involvement with other people and meeting new people and finding new ways of involving friends and family and others so that we can achieve something really amazing together as a group. And it's also called teamwork, isn't it? And I'm also really grateful for the opportunity to be able to share my stories with an awesome group of people like you guys. And you know, the other aspect um, that I really love about my uh, various journeys is that, you know, they've left me with so many incredible memories of really living through some pretty amazing moments. You know, it was sometime during the water record attempt on Whitefish Lake that I realized exactly why it is that I do these crazy things that I do. And I was in the middle of the lake and I was hammering away on my pedals and fighting my fatigue and breathing hard. And I was listening to music on my iPod and I turned the lights off on the boat now, this was long after the sun had already set, and the moon was still hidden behind a mountain. So, just imagine, it was very, very dark out. And boy, that water was just sparkling, and oh man, the stars. They were shining like, literally, like a million jewels in the sky. It was like another world out there. Beautiful. When was the last time you stayed up all night long just to watch the stars? And then, right in front of my eyes, I saw two, not one, but two, massive meteorites that just blaze across the night sky. Now, we're talking the full-on fireballs here. They left smoke trails behind and everything. It was spectacular. I could not believe my eyes. And you know, at that moment, I could have cared less about breaking Carter's record. And, and I knew, I knew that this, was what it was all about. You know, the world and our lives are just so full of so many amazing possibilities. And unfortunately, I think most of us experience so little of it. When you step out there and you bite off more than you can chew, I think your boldness exposes you to this hidden magical part of life. And I think it exposes you, more importantly, to this hidden magical part of you, too. And I actually do believe that this was the magic that Goethe was talking about in his famous quote. You know, life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but it is measured by the number of moments that take our breath away. When your destination is bold, I guarantee that your journey will be absolutely epic. 
Thank you very much. You can turn the sound up now a little bit. Thank you.